Welcome everyone, my name is Anne Rainton and I have the privilege and pleasure of being the founder and CEO of Image Innovators. And with this series, what I want to do is invite a whole lot of image consultants from around the world to come and speak with me to find out what it's like to become an image consultant, what they do on a daily basis, what their highs and lows are, so that if you're thinking about a career as an image consultant, you get some insider information. And if you are already an image consultant, it's nice to to know the challenges and the ups and downs and the different days of different consultants around the world. So first person off the rank is Janie Allen and Janie is a image consultant who lives in Canberra and that's our capital of Australia. So welcome Janie. Thank you, Anne, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> now, everyone, if you can hear a bit of noise in the background, we have a storm going on here in Melbourne, so hopefully everything will be okay. So, Janie, let me start right at the beginning. What did you do before you were an image consultant and what made you want to become one? Okay, so I was the women's pastor of my church um, for eight years in C3 Monash and my heart was able to... My heart was all about empowering women, encouraging women to love themselves, to em embrace themselves, to just bless on them. And I was the, you know, it was a preacher and I would create women conferences and, um, you know, uh, weekly meetings with the women, just loving on them. I had to take it. I had to step out of ministry for personal reasons. And I was working at Suzanne Gray at the time. And what I found while I was working in retail, I was also watching Suzanne and Trini and I would be literally cry my eyes out at these beautiful transformations that uh, Susanna and Trini were making on these women. And I thought I could do that. And I actually was just going to step out and just, you know, become a personal shopper. And it wasn't until someone who actually trained through you and, and Nicole Kettner said, I actually really highly recommend that you go and get trained and get some credentials. So I saved up and I did your course in 2008, I think. And um, yeah, it was so much fun. It was good. I loved it. And what age were you about at that time? That would have been 47 years of age. Right, okay. And I, I think that's actually quite in, important because a lot of people can think of this industry as something that a lot of young people do. But I mm. think that image consultants, what we do is broader than, say, stylists, that when we are a little bit older and we have a little bit of experience under our belt, I think we're more relatable to people and we understand people better. And as an image consultant, I think that really works well. I totally agree. I think being the age I am, I know I attract my age group as well. So I'm literally attracting myself um, being menopausal and carrying a little bit of weight. I feel like women can identify with me. They can relate with me. I'm quite real and raw around people anyway. And there's enough work for everyone. But I think, you know, when you're older um, or more mature, whatever words you want to use, there is an attraction. I think there's a, a feeling of safety and trust that comes with, with age. Oh, that's fantastic. And you were starting to indicate that you have... Uh, a certain clientele so there's lots of niche markets and everything that image consultants can go into have you found a niche market and who are they I really have I think you know once you create that for yourself then you really know how to hone in on that one specific target market because when you do start out you think you want to help the world but you can't you really need to know who your niche market is and I think now that I understand that it is the 50 plus really the 50 to 60s uh you're old women who are feeling invisible they're feeling you know they're time poor or they've got or the opposite they've got all more time and they just don't know how to dress or they've changed their lifestyle or a bit like myself they've put on 10 kilos and don't know what to wear so it's really easy then to attract that type of woman because that's who i am today and I think that makes us uh, different to say stylists, not that there's anything wrong with being a stylist, but because we're real women and we can be older and we can have some uh, figure issues, we haven't got necessarily great bodies, I think we become very relatable when somebody sees that, you know, hey, she's not a small girl, but she looks good, then yes. that, that makes someone feel very comfortable and confident around someone like them. Oh, and I mean, my my heart, my message is women to love the skin they're in, to embrace their shape and dress the body that they're living in today. This is what we have, so make the most of it. Don't wait till you've lost 10 kilos. 
I say to the women around me and when I'm presenting or with a client, I'm the biggest I've ever been, but I'm the happiest I've ever, I've ever been and the most confident I've ever been. And, you know, women say to me, gosh, Jane, you look great. I said, well, thank you. I really can't have a day off unless I'm, you know, a stranger in a foreign land. Um, however, <laughs> it's just the rules of line and design. I know how to put things together and I can show you how to do the same. Oh, that, yeah, absolutely. When you feel good on the inside, so when you're comfortable with who you are, then you can sort of just get on with life. Exactly. And I say, and I think you said this, Anne, in the training, you know, being skinny doesn't equate to being happy or healthy. It's all about having a healthy mindset and loving what we have and dressing our body shape. Dressing, And I say this every day. We have to dress our bodies every single day, but women just don't know how to dress and they're spending thousands of dollars on clothes that they just don't love. Absolutely. So is your business full-time or part-time? It is full-time. I love the freedom of being my own boss. Sometimes in quiet times I think, well, maybe I should get a job, but then I throw that thought out the window very quickly because I love my freedom. And however, you know, since networking heavily last year, my, my business has tripled. So that's created a great influx of, you know, financial freedom and just keeping me on my toes, which is really fun. And I love it. I'm glad to say that after 11 years, um, it's finally really growing. So that brings me to the question of how long did it take you to get your business rolling? It didn't happen overnight? Absolutely not. And that's the thing, girls, never give up because you just don't know. I'm very blessed that I have a husband who works and so it's not just solely me supporting myself. Maybe I would have worked a little harder. However, um, I've always wanted to be a contributor to the world, knowing that I have a story, knowing that I have influence, knowing that I can make a difference in the world, just like Susanna and Trini did you know, with those beautiful women. And I feel like I have those same moments. So what pushes me into you know, keeping going is those rewards that you have when you dress a woman who thinks she can't look good in a in a particular outfit and then you put something on her and, and she's crying and we're hugging and it's it's just the most rewarding job in the world and when you take women shopping do you need them to have a certain price point can you can you work with all levels of price point of your clients yes Absolutely. That's one thing I have to ask them is their budget. Before every every shopping experience, I always go through their personal style formula first. You know, if they want their colouring or their body shape done, whatever they want, I will work with them. However, I need to know their budget because if their budget is only a few hundred dollars, then we might go to Target. If not, we can go to other places. And uh, so there's, you know, there are particular shops that will be able to cater for your budget. I think that's very comforting because a lot of people would think that when you go to an image consultant, they're going to take you somewhere really expensive. Correct. And I think they even feel that um, even employing an image consultant is going to be expensive, but it really is an investment. And just recently I took a woman shopping because she had a special occasion. And what happened was that she was going to wear black. I put her in navy and she said, I, I would never have chosen this dress or gone into the shop in a million years. And she just felt so fantastic. Oh, that, that's great. And um, how, now, how do you keep yourself going? Because obviously, as an image consultant, you're working as a single person in your own business. Do you uh, have any mentors or what, what do you do to keep yourself going? Um, absolutely. Of course, Anne, you've been a mentor of mine for a long, long time. And of course, ARCI, that I knew as soon as I joined, I needed to come under an umbrella, a network umbrella, because being around like-minded people. And of course, when you're starting out, you don't know everything. So you need to be able to ask questions and, and feel like you've got someone to go to, because it's quite scary stepping out and as the expert when you're just you know really beginning. So it's important that you have that network around you and uh, that education too that helps. So you have some particular people? In terms of mentors? Yes. Yeah, well, of course, like I guess I mentioned you. I said, oh, yes, yeah, some girl, beautiful girlfriends on the Gold Coast. Zara and I, we were great mates, and Galinda up, up in Cairns, Annalisa Armitage when we first started out. And, of course, I've got other sort of mentors in, in, in other business realms where I can sort of go to them around more mindset stuff, which often I think is a really big issue because you really need to have a healthy mindset when you're in your own business. Absolutely. You can feel very lonely at times. Yes, absolutely. And so what do you do to get your market? How do you attract your clients? I basically, I, I do a lot of social media. I network regularly. You would see that I have a very active social life. I have a plan of spending or trying to meet 500 people throughout the year and so therefore every week I catch up with several people that I meet at a networking event and uh, try to build rapport and uh, try and get to work out what they do because I find that 
obscurity is one of um, a business's challenges. So if people don't know who you are, or what you do, then they can't find you. So it's very important to get out there. And I think my, my what would I know, my business has tripled since I've been networking heavily in the last 12 months. Right. Yes, I, I remember being told years ago, it's not just about who knows you, but it's who knows you and what you do. You've exactly. got to have that second part that's really, really important. Exactly. So it's really important to have your elevator pitch, 30 seconds, so people can, so, you know, you don't be rubbing on about everything that you do. Just, I say, I take the stress out of, I help women take the stress out of getting dressed by helping them project the most confident and authentic self. How do you do that? Well, they need to know their colors, their body shape and their personality, which saves them loads of time, lots of money, you know, makes them feel amazingly confident. That's great. And when you're seeing a client, what tools and services do you offer? So I start every consultation with my personal style formula because I need to know the person and I need to know the person that I'm going to dress. So it's like a bit of a boot camp around their image. I help them create a formula based on 10 words that really resonate with who they are. Because I find, Anne, that women go shopping or they want a particular look, but their clothes don't actually connect so there's a massive disconnection there so it's important that i know them i mean i think there was a greek philosopher that said know thyself and dress accordingly so once a woman knows who they are then then they can dress their truth so and then of course i offer color consults body shape with my private stylist and wardrobe and shopping oh. and of course i now sell clothes that's right you do sell clothes so tell us a little bit about that well, Trish G is a beautiful woman. Well, Trish G store, she's uh, a stylist in Melbourne. Uh, she came out of pastoring as well. And I was watching her on the sort of conference circuit around the churches. And she reached out to me last year and said, we'd really love to have you on the styling team. And I thought, look, I haven't sort of sold clothes before. I've, it's all, all about a service, not a product. So I decided that I'd give it a go. And the thing is, it's it's been really great add-on because women will come and get their colours done or come, in for, come for a consultation. And I will use those clothes as a demonstration with colour contrast and texture and, and style and body shape. And then I'll say, hey, this would really suit you. You know, these clothes are for sale. And so it's that little add-on for me and it's making me a little bit of extra money, which is quite fun. That's good. And uh, it's that really nice platform to meet other people on a very soft basis. You yes. Know, know them and then, you know, they, they can start to trust you and experience you and all that sort of thing. So that's Absolutely. fantastic. Finishing up, let me ask you just a few more questions. What would you consider has been your greatest challenge during your career and how have you overcome it? I think my greatest challenge was just the lack of confidence, that whole not good enough. I think women definitely suffer from that sort of shame and the comparison and especially when they see other consultants, you know, really doing well and I think, you know, and I know that really hit me when I was comparing myself to you know, other image consultants. But I guess, you know, I was able to push through mentally, thank goodness, and just know that, you know, I have to, that's a barrier that I have to, I have to break because I know that I have a gift inside of me. I have a story, I have a voice, I have talents. I, I want to contribute to this world and I'm meant to be able to, you know, use my influence for good. And so I think just getting some mentors, personal development is key, I really feel. And I think that's something that we need to invest in because if your mindset not is not right, then everything else won't be right. So my advice would just, you know, really get around great people, great friends and mentor and have some friends that you can actually spend time with and ask questions and, and network. That, get out that's there and fantastic. Network. And it, it shines through, uh, you know, how warm and, and friendly and also how um, genuine you are and how passionate you are about helping people because I think that really shines through. People can feel that authenticity and they, they feel comfortable to come to you knowing that you are real. Well, I hope so. I definitely feel that, that I, I have that. I, I'm all about loving the skin I'm in. And so therefore I think that is really relatable. People can see that that's, that's, it's not, fake it's real and I wear my heart on my sleeve anyhow so you know it's going to attract the right customers and clients for me that's fine that's fine not a problem um well thank you Janie it's been a <laughs> light um we all have husbands in the background that's okay that's right it's been an absolute delight to talk to you and uh, for those of you who joined us thank you very much we're going to be talking to another consultant next week I hope you'll join us then. So from Janie and I, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Anne. It was great. Great Bye. to be here. Bye.